Hello everyone, how's it going? My name is Dan the Tutor. In today's video, we've got a fun one for you. We're going to be calculating the escape velocity of Earth. So let me give the premise here. Let's say you're standing on the Earth, like this, and you want to throw a baseball in the air, and you throw it so fast, so hard, that it escapes the Earth's orbit and just goes out into the endless vacuum of space never to return to the Earth because you escape its gravitational pull. The question is, how hard would you have to throw that baseball? Ignoring air resistance and a bunch of other stuff. And that's a very tough question. But let me tell you the secret to answering it. The secret is going to be conservation of energy and universal gravitational energy. So first, I gotta pick two points. Point one is when we're throwing the ball off the surface of the Earth. And point two is when we're at a point really, really, really far away from Earth. At point one, I have universal gravitation energy. Even though you may not think so, I have it because I am a distance away from the center of the Earth. It's not because I'm on a mountain or anything, but because the distance I am away from the Earth is literally the radius of the Earth, which I'll call RE. I also have kinetic energy, obviously, and that's because I throw the ball with some velocity. At point two, what kind of energy do I have? Well, in order for a proper escape velocity problem, you need to realize that we are talking about this point right here as kind of the peak height. In other words, at peak height, the velocity is zero, so there's no kinetic energy. Let me explain why the velocity is zero. If there is some velocity, let's say the velocity is two meters per second, just making up a number, then that means that can't be the escape velocity because you threw it too hard. You had some leftover velocity. So I'm saying the minimum amount of velocity needed to escape the Earth's gravitational pull, which means we're talking about the peak height, which is zero velocity. And so it's only going to have universal gravitation because it's, it's some distance away, and I'll talk about that distance later. But first, for E total 1, total energy at point 1, that's going to be negative G, it's universal gravitation, so negative G, mass 1 of the Earth, mass two of the object, we'll just say the ball, m object, or whatever, divided by the distance, which we said was the radius of the Earth, re. Then I have to add the kinetic energy, which is one half mass of the object times that velocity squared, and I'm solving for velocity. So that's it for e total one. Then for e total two, like we said, it's just gravitational energy, which is gonna be negative g, mass of the Earth, mass of my object, and then divided by my distance. Now the question is, what is this distance from point one to point two? And the answer is, the only way you can escape the gravitational field of the Earth is if you make it a distance infinitely far away from the Earth, which I know is technically impossible, but who cares? It's a number so big that it's essentially infinity. And so the distance here is infinity. And again, there was no kinetic energy, so it's just this. One thing you need to know is, in math or physics for that matter, whenever you have an infinity in the denominator, that makes the entire number equal to zero. Meaning, energy total at point two is just zero. And since I always want to set E total one equal to E total two for conservation of energy, that means I have this going on. From E total one, negative G, mass earth, mass object over radius of Earth, plus one half mass object velocity squared, that is equal to E total two, which is zero. Now, if I wanna solve for the velocity, it's about getting V by itself, so I'm gonna add this term to both sides. So on the left, I'm left with one half mass object times velocity squared equals to, now positive G, because I added it to that side, mass earth mass object over radius of the earth. You'll notice that the mass of the objects will cancel, which is nice. And if I want to solve for V, it means I'm multiplying both sides by two to cancel out the one half. So now V squared equals two G mass of the earth over radius of the earth, which I can rewrite like this, two G mass earth over radius of the earth equals V squared. And then if I want to solve for V, then I just take the square root of this. So the escape velocity of the Earth is equal to two times the universal gravitation constant times the mass of the Earth divided by the radius of the Earth. 
And the cool thing is, too, you can now find the escape velocity of any planet, assuming you know its mass and its radius, because the equation's still the same. And if you were to actually plug in the values for the mass of the Earth and the radius of the Earth, and g is 6.67 times 10 to the minus 11th, you'll actually get an escape velocity of about 11 kilometers per second. So that's how fast the kid threw his baseball. Isn't that incredible? So that's going to do it for this video. If you do have any questions, please post them in the comments below. I hope you have a great rest of your day, and I'll see you in the next video. Take care, and bye-bye.